OK, so in the third part of this uh, unit on curve fitting, we're going to talk about um, situations in which you really have to go and provide some kind of initial guess to the parameters. So as we saw in unit one, when we're using uh, things like fmin and fsolve, we needed to give an initial starting value so that um, SciPy could have a go at working out where to find either the minimum or the root of our function. And curve fit actually is the same thing um, in that it needs to have some kind of starting point for all the parameters. Now, the way curve fit works, if you don't tell it where to start, it starts by assuming that all your parameters are one. And so in the examples we've been looking at in the first two parts of the video tutorial, that was absolutely fine because our parameters al already were quite close to one. They were one, one and a half, 0.5. Um, and so curve fit didn't have a hard time trying to work out how to move to go and make those, those parameters good. But if you're dealing with a situation where some of your parameters are very, very far away from one, then uh, curve fit can go a bit haywire. The other situation in which it's important to give curve fit a good initial guess is when your function that you're trying to fit, um, you have to be quite close before you start seeing that it's even going to be remotely close to fitting. And a really good example of something like this is a function that describes a peak. So if you imagine some data which is all flat apart from a single sharp peak, and you try to write a, a function to fit that, if you're off on your peak position, so that your calculated peak is miles away or even a little bit away from your real peak, then it doesn't fit at all. And moving your peak position just a little bit makes no difference at all. Um, so in order for curve fit to work, it has to see that changing the parameters does actually make your fit get better or worse. And if it can't see the fit is changing significantly when it moves the parameters, it doesn't know what to do with the parameters in order to try and make things better. So you have to go and make sure that curve fit is always starting with a set of parameters that means it's got some chance of homing in on the best possible fit. So here's an example of, of, of where this goes wrong. So we're taking the same data as we had before, um, but we've just multiplied it by a million. Um, so now rather than being in, in one, two, whatever, those are one, two million big. Now, um, we therefore expect the A and the B parameters should be about a million times bigger too. We've just multiplied everything by a million. So if we try and go and do the curve fit in the um the way we were uh, just going to do beforehand um and so we just go and call curve fit with the x and y data and pass it in our um function then what happens is it completely falls over and you'll see here it's given us something that looks completely wrong the blue line in no way whatsoever remotely matches the red data points and if we go and make up one of those tables again, where we look at the optimum parameter it's found, we look at the uncertainty it's found in it, and then we look at the correct values we're expecting, and we look at how many times is the difference from the value it found and the correct value divided by the uncertainty it's found, then we find that all those parameters are horrendously badly fitting. They're out by five, six, 11, 22 standard deviations. And statistically speaking, that basically means that's just not a fit. There's another thing here. If you look at the um, parameters, then you'll see that those uncertainties, in some cases, are absolutely massive compared to the the, the size of the um, of the value of the parameters. You look at the the B parameter, for example. The uncertainty is actually bigger than the parameter it's found. Um, and I think, yes, the same is true of the A parameter as well. So if your uncertainty is bigger than the parameter you've found, you might as well just say the parameter is zero, plus or minus a very, very large number. It's as, just as good as, as, as what you've found. You'll also see that in this case, the parameters, some of the parameters have gone negative, um, which also doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So basically, this is just telling you this, this hasn't worked. And that's simply because if you start off assuming the parameters are one, then curve fit has no way of knowing how to, it just gives up trying to make the parameters get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it starts assuming that A and B were, were one, 
and then that didn't really fit at all and didn't really know what to go and do and it's sort of nothing it does tries to make anything any better and eventually it, it just gives up on you um and uh, it can't work out uh, what the parameters should be so what we need to go and do is we need to supply it with some guess as to what those parameters should be so this is done with a parameter a keyword parameter called p0 and what you need to do is use p0 is to give it a list of initial guesses or initial values to start looking at for this parameters that are in your fitting function and the you need to have the same number of parameters in p0 as you have parameters in your fitting function you can't have more you can't have less you must have exactly the same number so in other words you must give an initial guess for each and every parameter you have um, and they're given in the same order because again remember curve fit does not understand what your function is meaning is, is trying to do it just knows it's a thing that takes x and four parameters and so it says okay i'm going to give x and four parameters and i've got for initial start values for those parameters. So I'll use those as my initial starting point. So when we go and do that, um, we put in a, a, a set of P0 and I give it some sensible starting values. So in this case, I've just given it a million and then one for omega one, a million for B and um, again, one for omega two. And you'll see in fact, it's managed to home in and fit uh, quite reasonably the green curve is going through those data points reasonably nicely. And again, we make up the same table. And um, what we find is that the, okay, the numbers aren't precisely a million. And um, again, the angular, the omega one, the omega two aren't precisely right. But that's just what we saw before with our slightly noisy data. Again, if we look at the difference between the value, the optimum value it found and the real true answer, and normalize that difference by the, the standard error it found, then you see it's fitting things again, by and large to within uh, one standard deviation, so one standard error of the true values. Um, and again, we seem to have most problems with our omega two parameter, but as we said before, we would expect one of those to be out by a, a, a factor uh, that's more than one standard error. That's entirely, entirely reasonable. So um, it turns out that in a, most cases, I'd say you probably need to have a P0 supplied um, for the curve fit to work. And in fact, when you're doing curve fit, usually the hardest part of doing curve fitting is not in fact using curve fit, it's figuring out what to do with to create a good value of P0. And there's not a single answer to this. There's not a kind of, oh, you just do it like this. That I can give you. It depends on every single situation and every single data types of data sets and the type of the fitting function as to what guesses as how can you go and make guesses as to um, uh, sensible values. So, for example, in 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 this data set, what you might have done is, for example, looked at the um, the largest value uh, in your data set and said, well, let's just pretend that that's roughly what a plus b is going to be. So I might have just simply said, well, let's just make A and B uh, half the biggest value in my data set, because that will give me something which goes as the rough overall scale. And that would have picked up the that I needed to have things which were of order of a million um, in order to go and make this work. Because if we look at the, the data we plotted there, you'll see the largest value is about two million. And so I said, oh, let's just make A and B roughly one million, um, because the A plus B is roughly two million, then um, it would have worked quite nicely. So as I say, the real trick in curve fitting is figuring out how to write or how to come up with good guesses for P0. And often that means writing some kind of function which is going to take your X and Y data points and use them in some way in order to go and make that guess. Again, generally speaking, you can't just go and assume a constant set of values for P0. You have to have some kind of way of actually looking at your data in order to make a quick and rough guess for P0 and then let curve fit go and do the work of figuring out more precise values and estimating the uncertainty in those values.